One of the criticisms we hear so often as carnivores is that no, there are no studies on the carnivore diet, no research. And this seems like a major problem, right? Because the vast majority of nutritionists and doctors and talking heads on the media promote fruits and vegetables. So how do we make our case? There are a couple of ways to respond to this. First is that most nutrition studies mean nothing. They're epidemiological, they're just observation. And remember what you learned a long time ago, correlation is not causation. And these, most of the studies that are done really mean nothing. A second approach, and also I like this one too, is to say, actually, you're wrong. We do have lots of studies, real world studies. People have lived on meat for centuries, millennia, and we're here. So it's a study in the real world. It's real life. Our existence, our lives prove the effectiveness of the carnivore diet because we haven't had processed food for hundreds of thousands of years, but we have had meat. But there is also a third way to make our case. And there is actually a real good carnivore study that has been done. And it was done almost 100 years ago. Truly incredible scientific study. And it was done 100 years ago with the cutting edge laboratory tests of the time. And it was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. Now you might be thinking, Rabbi, that's meaningless. It's 100 years old. What can that tell? Well, actually, I trust the older studies much more than newer ones because these older studies were less likely to be driven by an agenda. Now we know that the medical associations like JAMA and the ADA, American Diabetes Association, they are captured by pharmaceutical interests. So what did this study reveal? It revealed that an all meat diet works wonders and that such a diet can sustain near optimum health. So let's see what happened. How did this study work? It all started in 1906 with a man named Wilhelm Stefansson. He was an explorer and an anthropologist. In fact, he taught at Harvard. And in 1908, he went and lived in the Arctic with the Inuit, commonly known as the Eskimos, for five years. Initially, he had supplies and he had Western food, his typical diet brought with him. And he mixed that typical food with what the Inuit ate. But then in 1908, a ship with several other explorers and anthropologists and supplies and food for Stefansson was supposed to come, but the ship didn't make it. So Stefansson had to turn and rely on hunting and working closely with the Inuit to eat and survive. He didn't have his Western food anymore. So what happened is he took to the all meat Inuit diet. He began to follow exactly what the Eskimos did. And he noted in his diaries at the time that the Inuit diet consisted of 90% meat and fish. They had occasional berries. Inuit would often go six to nine months a year eating nothing but fatty meat and fresh fish. And they were perfectly healthy tall, no tooth decay, no obesity or disease. Stefansson believed that it was the high saturated fat content of the Inuit diet. As he noted, about 70 to 80% of total Inuit calories came from fat. And that was the mechanism that allowed them to thrive. 